What's up guys, it's your boy DS and today we're going to be going over Saki Fua and everything you guys need to know from teams to matrices or whatever the case may be. So anyways, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and start with her teams. Now obviously, if you are looking for a damage dealing Saki Fua, the best team for her right now is going to be Tsubasa, Frigg, and then herself. Now, I know that some people may have skipped Frigg, or some people may not have Tsubasa built. Maybe some people are just switching to Frost right now, right? If that is the case, there are a couple of other things you can use. For a defensive, let's say you're, you're, you're looking to go for a defensive Asaki Fua build, you can take out Tsubasa for Meryl. You can run Meryl, Frigg, and Saki Fua for a Fortitude Resonance build. If you are looking for an alternate to a DPS build, you can run Claudia. Let's say you don't have Frigg, but you have Claudia. You can run Claudia instead of Frigg, if, if, if that's how you want to run it. But those are pretty much going to be your best teams as far as she goes. So Frigg, Subasa, and herself for DPS Team 1. If you do not have Frigg, you can potentially put in Claudia. If you don't have Subasa, you at that point you can kind of just put in any DPS to get the DPS resonance that you can. As far as tanking goes, you can go... Frigg is going to be the best on the team just for the bonuses. But you can go Saki, Frigg, Meryl. If you don't have Frigg, at that point, it doesn't really matter who else you put on there. If you want to go a healer, you can, like Coco or whoever else, simply because you already have Meryl and Saki giving you that resonance. Or let's say you don't have Meryl or don't have her built. At that point, you can go into other tanks like Huma. Just remember that you, if you don't have another ice unit on the team, you will not be getting resonance. And with not getting resonance, you won't be getting the resistance. Because if you guys remember, and a lot of people seem to forget this, the resonance gives you frost attack, but it also gives you frost resistance. So that's just going to be a really big buff to you if you are fighting a frost enemy. Which, if you're going to be running frost resonance, you do want to be tanking frost enemies as much as possible. But anyways, that is her teams. And now that we're done talking about her teams, let's go ahead and get into her matrices. Now, one thing I want to talk about with the matrices, and I said this in my other video, but Saki Fua is a character that doesn't need to run her own set. A lot of people, you know, wanted to know, hey, should I get Saki Fua's, you know, matrices? Should I get her matrices? What should I do? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the thing about that is you don't actually need them. As you guys see right here, you'll notice when Frost Resonance gets triggered every three seconds, deal Frost Damage equal to etc, etc, etc. And then you can move on to the four piece, attack the target 10 times to inflict a 12 second flash freeze. The point is, none of it, she can utilize all of this without having it on herself. Both of these passes take place in the background. So you can put this on someone else and give her a more damaging set. So there should never be a scenario where she's running her four piece or two piece. It's the same reason why you you wouldn't run Frick, run Frick's two piece on her if she was the damage dealer. As you can see right here, increase frost attack by 8% when switching between weapons. This works in the background. So you don't have to run this on your damage dealer. So as far as Saki goes, you don't want a passive type of matrix on her. You want to get a matrix set on her that only she can utilize. And with that being the case, you generally would default to two-piece Samir, two-piece Crow. Now, let's say you don't have two-piece Samir or Crow. You can go into two-piece Shiro and two-piece King. If you guys don't know, two-piece Samir increases damage progressively as you're hitting the enemy two piece or two piece crow is going to increase your crit damage against enemies below 60 percent hp two piece shiro and this is the thing two piece shiro is completely free they give everybody two piece shiro from the suppressor and the two piece samir is completely free they give everybody four piece samir from the gacha pawn so these two sets are guaranteed for everyone to have but 2P Shiro does increase damage and shatter to targets with more than 50% HP. So this is going to be really good as well. 
and then two piece king does increased damage after shattering the enemy so these are all things that saki can utilize that you can't put on any other character so the best matrix sets for her are going to be two piece samir two piece crow two piece shiro two piece king and that is depending on you can mix mix and match depending on which ones you have the best two are going to be samir and crow and then it's going to be shiro and then it's going to be king simply because shiro is giving that upfront damage and with king you're not getting the damage until after you shatter but all four of those sets are going to be really good for her um her set is just not good for her it's a set you want to put on the support like frig or someone else to boost her damage now that we're done talking about matrices let's go ahead and go into simulacrum traits and i mean it's pretty much the same thing uh, over and over right samir is just going to give you the biggest damage boost because this stacks out of combat so whenever you go in combat you're already at max stacks and if you get hit you'll lose one stack whatever but the point is this gives 20 percent damage increase this is final damage increase and if you don't know what that means that means after you do your damage number it gets increased by 20 percent basically and that's how she works because it's final damage now a go-to for me and for a lot of people if you think you're going to get hit a decent amount and you kind of just want to have survival not survivability but not be able to be interrupted is frigs if you guys don't know frigs will give you hyper body and it will give you 20 per 24 percent frost attack boost now keep in mind it's only frost attack it doesn't work for any other element but this is going to be a really good one but it has to stack up but once it stacks up it's good to go and it's going to be really good for the team especially if you're getting hit a decent amount it's going to do more damage than samir's a lot of people like to you know fall back on subasas simply because it gives one stack of fear strike uh, and you can do it one stack per second each stack adds 0.6 percent and it's 30 stacks so this is going to give you 18 percent attack now the reason why i don't like doing this one is because number one it's giving you attack and not elemental attack but number two it's only giving you 18 percent attack where frig gives 24 percent frost attack and then samir gives 20 percent final damage so samir and frig are both going to be giving more damage for the character and the thing about frig is frig is giving you utility now you're getting hyper body you can't be cc'd so you can dish out your damage non-stop without being interrupted with tsubasa she's not really giving anything to the team she's kind of just you know there now that's for the offensive side if we are looking at the defensive side of saki then we can look at her passive her passive will be decent when HP is lower than 70%, increase all resistance by 40% with an extra 60 resistance to frost resistance, right? In the state of silent flow, after the sword shadow releases surge and blocks an attack. So basically, after being in her defensive stance, if she has fortitude, which if you're running this passive, you want that, releases surge and blocks an attack, the teammate with the lowest HP percent will get three block abilities, not including yourself, lasting for 10 seconds, the maximum blocking damage does not exceed 15 percent of the teammates max hp so if you are looking to be a tank player with saki fua her passive is really good simply because it gives you increase to all resistance and frost resistance even further on top of that it will allow you to block abilities for teammates moving on to relics the best relic for her is going to be hologram projector simply because number one it's going to allow her to dish out damage on her auto attacks or charged attacks dash attacks her skill everything like that but if you do have her a1 which allows her to reset her passive it will allow you to basically get off four skills because she's going to do skill hologram does does it and then she's going to do it again so hologram does it again it's going to be very very good it's going to be allowing her to dish out insane amount of damage now you can obviously partner that with a Kiwan simply because Kiwan's just Kiwan's just one size fits all works for every single scenario. But if you didn't want to use Kiwan, you can use a couple of other things like Space Time Rift or whatever the case may be. Now that we're done talking about all of that, I do want to talk about her rotations and what I think is one of the best ways to utilize this character. And as far as all of that goes, it's pretty much using Frig skill twice, Saki skill twice 
on top of using Subasa skill one time. And what I mean by that is, as you guys will see right here, you can, if you if you have a Subasa with dupes, you can stack this first. So what you want to do is, obviously you go into her one, go into her dash one time, then you want to go to Frig, then you want to go to Sakifua, and then after that you can go into auto attacks and things like that. And this is what you'll do until your cooldowns come down. Right? So you'll do this over and over. And this is more so for bosses. Obviously, if you're killing mobs, it's you know it's it's gonna be uh, you're gonna kill the mobs a lot faster. But once you get all of this down, as you can see right here, you'll switch over, and then you will go into hologram projector. You'll do this right here. You'll go into frig. You'll go into Saki Fua. And then you go into Saki Fua again. Then you can go into Frig. And as you guys see right here, this has allowed you to do so much damage. And the reason why is because you use your hologram projector, right? You'll use Frig's one, which will do two because the hologram projector. Then you'll do Saki Fua's one. Which will do four because of hologram projector. Then you'll do Saki Fool's one again, which is gonna be six. And then you'll switch back over to Frig, use Frig's one again, and that's going to be eight. So obviously, I know that the hologram projector only does 35% of your damage, or if you have it maxed out, it does 50. But the point is, you have now just done eight skills across the board in that short amount of time because of hologram projector and the reset that Saki Fua gets. So, if you guys want to get out as much damage as possible, I feel like this is one of, if not the best way to do it. You obviously want to get Tsubasa skill out. You can get some stacks if you want to. But after that, you want to go into your combo. Yes, you can switch to Tsubasa again if you want more stacks. As you guys see, if you look at the total damage, Saki Fua did 52% or 53%. Balmung did 41%. And then Ice Wind Arrow did 3.2%. So, Ice Wind's not going to really be doing as much damage it's literally just there to give you the give you the attack buff number one and then number two it's there for the dps resonance showing you what it looks like if you guys do utilize the subasa arrows it would look like this so you start out here on the get you a buff go into this go into this go into that right there get you two of those then you go back into Saki Fua and you just have to make sure that you switch over to Subasa to get the buff or keep the buff up then you'll go here and then you'll go into hologram projector you go into your one 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 and then after that you can go into the rest of your stuff again Um, that's that's pretty much how the team will work. You just got to make sure that you cycle into Subasa, get you your attack stack back up, and then go back into your normal damaging combo. Pretty cool team comp, though. I'm really enjoying how this team's chemistry works together with itself. But anyways, that is going to be it for this video. Be sure to give a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment down below. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.